Okay, time to look at the primary receiver now. This is based on two previous videos. It's based on the TFT buttons and Arduino video. Um, it might be called menu video. I'll post a link to that. And the other video this is based on is called the transceiver series, the NRF 24L01 transceiver series. And if you look at part four, that should um, that should prepare you. So just remember that this is the primary receiver. Okay, I'm not going to go into depth with a lot of issues here because these are already covered in my previous videos. So I'm only going to show you the um, parts that you may not be aware of. Okay, so this code is a mix of, um, of the two tutorials code basically with some bits added in. So I'll highlight the bits that have changed. Um, to start with the menu, of course the menu is bigger because I'm transmitting more data so there's got to be more uh, spaces for menu so that's changed so I've changed that to 7 instead of 4 I've added a new variable here to um, to set the printout length this is accessed in two parts of the sketch now so it makes sense to have a variable set it once and then whichever methods need to read it they can easily get access to it via this silly things like this this used to say in the previous video it said something like hi Anthony or hello Anthony or something like that I've just changed this to thanks but it doesn't really matter at the moment new stuff so I've got a string array called decoded and I'm actually getting the transmitter to transmit seven parts of data comma separated and that's why I need seven spaces so I need seven uh, elements in an array to store the seven split variables so that's what I need that for some variables have changed here yeah yeah but they're just menu changes so the top line is going to be a almost like a menu title and the bottom line is going to be for data so you've seen this in a previous video now SPI and chip select now we're going to be using more than one SPI device it's probably a good idea to use the chip select so chip select the way it works is that you give a device a chip select pin and put that pin in the Arduino of course so the TFT will have one pin for chip select and the NRF will have another pin for chip select and what you do is that you tell the Arduino to set the one that you're talking to low. So you, you set that one low and you set the other one high. So the one we want to talk to, we set that chip select to low. When we finish talking to it, we set it back to high. And then you switch like that. So any devices that are high um, are basically deaf. And any devices that are set low in chip select are, um, are active. So you can see that in here, I'm setting things high and low um, when they need to. But the buttons haven't changed. And now. Okay, so new stuff. Decode the array into separate string using the comma delimiter. So what we're saying there is if received character zero is hash, then do this and that's good because the transmitter always transmits a string that starts with hash because we told it to so if it doesn't start with hash there's something wrong and if there's something wrong then ignore it so in this case it's right so let's see temp2 equals string rec so we want a represent representation of rec which is the whole char array of the received data and store it in temp2. Then for each character in the received string, then go through it all until you find a comma or a semicolon. And then basically fill the decoded array with data from the incoming split by commas. And that's basically what that does. I'm not going to go into that in too much depth, but that's what that does. 
So at this point, we've received a string of data. We split it into parts, and then we've put those parts into the uh, corresponding cell in an array. So update menu, you've seen that before. Menu changed, you've seen that before. Ah, there's a new code here though. So in the previous video, I just had one menu. It was like menu one, menu two, menu three, menu four, and it, that text was centered in the display. Well, now we've got the menu, which is going to say something like um, solar voltage, solar amperage, and then there's going to be a second line underneath, which is actually going to show you the, the value. So we set the text size, text size to three, which is slightly bigger because it's size two here. Then we get the decoded value out of the array, depending on which menu we, we've currently got selected. Save that into the temp variable. Then, then output that to a char array. And then from the char array, print it to the TFT screen at this certain place here. It's a bit of a lazy way of doing it. You could get around this and just use a char array from the start, but I like to use the string methods. So yeah, um, this probably isn't the most efficient way of doing it, but it works for me. Now, we've got a new method, and I'll just explain what this is. So, in the previous video, we had something called menu change or change menu or something. And that was an, almost like an event. When somebody pressed the button up or down, it would sort of invoke a method which would change the TFT to go along with it. So, if someone pressed the up button, it would go down a menu and therefore show you the text which was relating to the previous menu. So if you were on menu two and you pressed up, it would show you it would change it to menu one. If you pressed up on menu one, it would change it to menu four and three, two, one, etc. So that's fine, but now we've got a different issue. The TFT can update when somebody presses an, the up or down button, but now the TFT can also change if the value changes. So let's say we're on the same menu, like we're on maybe solar voltage menu, for example, and solar voltage is 28 volts. Well, a second later, it could be 29 volts. So we need to somehow trigger um, an update to the TFT module in that way or for that circumstance. And this is exactly where this is used in the code. So I'll just show you what this method does now. Now, if you remember just um, a minute ago, I said that there are two parts of text printed to the TFT. There's the menu, which would be like, for example, solar voltage. And then there's a bit of text underneath it, which displays the value. And we're not going to change the menu text, as I call it, because the menu hasn't changed. It's just simply the value is updated. So we're only going to update the value that's updated. Okay, so this is how we're going to do it. So if temp, um, temp is the, the string of the data that's previously written to the TFT, that's the value. If string is not equal to the string representation of the actual value in the array, and that's, remember that's always kept up to date. So if they're not the same, if the previous value is not the same as the current value, then it needs an update. So, TFT stroke 255255, right, what this is, is that means foreground. So change the foreground to white, basically. And you may be thinking, well, that's not right, because white is the background colour. But it is right, because we're going to try and do something clever. So we know what the text previously was, and we've just set it to white. So if we rewrite over that with white then we'll effectively blank off the old text and therefore make the background white again. And that's quite clever because otherwise we'd have to reset the whole TFT screen and we'd have to reset every pixel. So if we just simply rewrite over the old text with white, that's just as good. So that's what we've done there. So we've done that. Then change temp to the new updated value. And then as we did before, um, 
print that to a char array, and then change the background color, uh, sorry, the foreground color back to the gray color, and then write the fresh value. And that's just here. So rewrite, rewrite onto the TFT the updated value. And there we go. And then this update menu, um, if I just find it, yeah, it's called, it's called in several places. Oh, uh, sorry, it's not called in several places, actually. It's called in one place, and that's here. So if data is read, um, then we try and update the menu. So whenever data, whenever data is read, we need to check to see if the data is now not what it previously was when we've just written it. And there we go. So I'll just show you this working again. Okay, so you can see this thing working now. I'll just press the menu down and up so you can see. And um, now I think it's time to reflash the transmitter to give different values and you should be able to see this light value change. I've changed the light value from 2500 to 1250. So it's just compiling now. Okay, so in a second the receiver or this uh, monitor should detect that light is now being transmitted at 1250. And there you go. So, as usual, I'd like to say thanks very much for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to click subscribe. And um, thank you again. Bye.